This was an adventure about which we had dreamed for years. From Heathrow, we flew via Paris to Buenos Aires. We had not been to Buenos Aires for 35 years. Remarkably it was unchanged. The city, which is built on a 100 metre grid, greeted us as if we had never been away. Our first trip was to the delta at the head of the Plate Estuary where we took a launch from Tigre around the many channels. Some 3,000 people live in the delta and the only way of accessing their properties is by boat. I had first been there, some 35 years earlier, as a guest of the Argentine State Shipping Company. The street markets in Buenos Aires were fascinating. The next day, after lunch in a cafe off Florida, we went to one of the best tango shows in town. The Carlos Gardel show includes an excellent dinner and a wonderful performance. Going through the phone book, I managed to find Daniel Olmedo, the lawyer with whom I had worked in Argentina 35 years previously. He was able to visit us in the hotel and we had a wonderful reunion. Daniel remained as charming as ever. Unfortunately, our meeting was brief as we had to fly to Ushuaia the following day. Our hotel on the shore of the Beagle Channel had some wonderful views. After a day wandering around the town of Ushuaia, we joined our ship, the Stella Australis. Much of the trip south was through the night, but eventually we re-anchored 
in the lee of Horn Island in the early hours of the morning. With 165 steps to climb, Dan decided not to land on Hall Island. It was quite an experience and there was a surprising amount to see, including the beautiful albatross sculpture. On one trip in four it is not possible to land on Horn Island and only on one occasion in ten is the weather sufficiently settled for the small ferry on which we were travelling to pass south of Cape Horn and up the west coast of Horn Island. We were lucky. We could see the lighthouse and the sculpture and a mile to the west we passed Cape Horn itself. There was an incredible amount of bird life around as we made our way north through the sounds. There were several unmarked rocks that the skipper clearly had to be careful to avoid. In the early afternoon we anchored off Wulaya Bay. This time Dan did go ashore, even though it was raining hard. The displays in the museum describe well the history of the area, including the involvement of the British Captain Fitzroy. Through the night we went on back through the Murray Channel and into the Beagle Channel and made our way west through the network of channels that form the whole of this area. Eventually, almost emerging into the Pacific, we turned north into the Coburn Channel.
mountains and glaciers were impressive and eventually the ship stopped off the Aguila Glacier while we went ashore. The ship then went further up the channel to where the water was shallower so it could anchor for a couple of hours. The visit to shore was fascinating. At first there was no sign of the glacier but clear evidence of rainforest with many plants and birds. Then, as we turned the corner, the glacier was there before us. The trees on this island give some sense of scale. It was a huge glacier. After a stop of three hours at the glacier, we reboarded the ship and started to head north back towards the Magellan Strait. That evening was the last we spent on board with our friends, with whom we had shared a dining table for the trip. We sailed overnight past Punta Arenas, eventually anchoring off Magdalena Island. The Magellan penguins on the island were charming. There must have been tens of thousands of them. Eventually, we made fast in Punta Arenas. While the ship was making fast, we were treated to a display by some dolphins. That evening, we had a wonderful meal in a restaurant very close to the hotel. It had been recommended to us by Segundo, one of our table companions on the voyage who lived in Punta Arenas. We had achieved our main goal already. We had been to the Horn and because of the luck of the weather we had actually rounded it. 